sacral and sacral tumors ligaments, and there's some yeah. important clinical information, and I want to make sure that we get uh, through it at the end of uh, the last day. So as we discussed, the dorsal sacral ligament and sacral tumors ligament, it's very hard to distinguish where one starts and where one ends. And to further complicate things, uh, the work of gleaming has shown us that this entire posterior chain uh, becomes even longer by way of connection from the sacrotuberous ligament into the biceps femoris on that, uh, as it inserts onto the issue of tuberosity. As you move superiorly, you also have connection between the ipsilateral erector uh, fascia as well as historical lumbar fascia in the lumbar spine. So what we have here is a long posterior line, uh, which clinically becomes important. If you think of it like an elastic band, if you put tension through the elastic band uh, and there is a fault in the elastic, it's going to snap at that particular spot. So in terms of this myofascial sling, many times where you feel the symptoms occurring are along the dorsal sacral ligament. That's usually the first place you'll feel it. Other times, let's say you have a long distance runner, you could feel it in the proximal hamstring tendon. The proximal hamstring tendon is very uh, common in runners. So in treating that, we have to remember to release that entire posterior superficial line. We also discussed how the dorsal sacral ligaments particularly get confusing because there's the long dorsal sacral ligament, which is completely continuous with the sacral tuberous, but there's also the short dorsal sacral ligament. And not many people pay attention to the difference between the two. The short dorsal sacral ligaments are going from the PSIS and they're almost horizontally uh, moving and inserting onto the sacrum. So in terms of FR release of that, there would be a completely separate movement in order to gap that sacroiliac joint and release tension in the short dorsal sacral ligament versus the long dorsal sacral ligament which utilizes a continuation with the sacral tuberous and the biceps femoris in its Release protocol. Joint opens up a little bit, right? So what we have to remember there is that those deep ligaments are going to go perpendicular to the joint. So that's the difference: is superficial is parallel to the joint, deep is perpendicular to the joint. So we're going to use different movements to tense those different ligaments, right? So now that I have her leg up already, we'll start with the deep. So now if I come on that medial side of the PSIS and well, to generate tension on that, we're going to have to go with the fibers, so we're actually going to have to go towards your sacrum. So now we're trying to work between ilium and sacrum. Hold our thumb there. What we want to do is we want to get that ilium to sort of move away from the sacrum to generate tension on those deep ligaments, correct? So what we're going to do is, if I'm going to pull that tension there, I'm going to grab her leg and I'm going to guide it down here like this. I wonder if that's just because of it's a broader Conversely, we just learned that the long go parallel to the joint, so that's not going to work. That's not going to develop any tension on those long So what we're going to have to do there is we're going to have to get that to move this way, right? So we're going to get the, the ilium to move like this so that we can go and generate tension on the ligament so the ligament pulls underneath our thumb. So we can do that one of two ways. One, we can just grab her leg like this and just bring her now, the long dorsal sacral ligament, as we said yesterday, acts as a counter to counter nutation. So in other words, if the sacrum counter nutates, meaning the base moves posteriorly, the long and short dorsal sacral ligaments will prevent springing of the pelvis. So if you take somebody's uh, seated posture, <coughs> If they're up into a good posture with a good lumbar lordosis, there isn't any strain on these dorsal sacral ligaments. As soon as the person slouches, which is mostly the, which is how most people sit, most people sit in their chair somewhere away from the back of it, and then they go to find the back by slouching posteriorly so that they can relax in their chair. If you sit in that position, the base of the sacrum will move posteriorly, so you'll be counter -nutating. And the anominates will have to splay slightly in order to accept the weight of the body on top of the sacrum. Does that make sense? So in essence, 
the only thing that's holding your pelvis together at that point, especially once your muscles become fatigued after a few hours of sitting that way, will be your, your dorsal sacral ligaments. So it would be akin to, let's say you're watching a movie for an hour and a half. It would be akin to holding your finger in an extended position for an hour and a half. After which time, if you let go, you'll notice you have a lot of pain in that capsule because you've, in essence, sprained that joint. So it's the same thing with chronic dorsal sacral ligament problems. Um, people with long, longer term postural problems will have uh, dorsal sacral ligament injury, in which case releasing the dorsal sacral ligament, sacral tuberous ligament, that entire posterior line, as well as the short dorsal sacral will become important. Um, many times people present with sacroiliac joint syndrome. So we have to differentiate sacroiliac joint syndrome. Is it a restriction in the joint itself requiring manipulative care, or is it a chronic stretching of the ligamentous structures that are holding the uh, SI joint together, in which case it most likely will not require manipulative care. You would be looking more towards releasing fascial contracture, as well as rehabilitating the supportive musculature. And we discussed yesterday that the uh, gluteus maximus, because of its perpendicular fiber orientation to the sacroiliac joint, would be a very important muscle uh, to target in rehabilitating hyper or, um, uh, hypermobile sacroiliac joint problems. Now the sac uh, sacro tuberous ligament does the opposite. So if we take the attachment of the coccyx, it goes from coccyx to ish2. If we take the, the, the uh, base of the sacrum and tilt it anteriorly, that would be counter -nutating. Or sorry, that would be nutating the sacrum. The sacrotuberous ligament acts as a check to mutation of the sacrum. So although they're, they're actually connected, they have the complete opposite effect on controlling the pelvis or controlling the, the sacrum and the joints. Do we have any questions about that? <coughs>